Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks uh, for coming to fire station number 22 in St. Paul. I'm Tim Butler, the St. Paul Fire Chief, and we're here today to honor two of our citizens, uh, two young gentlemen that uh, made a heroic uh, rescue in a fire situation and saved the uh, life of an elderly gentleman here in St. Paul. You know, our country was founded on the principles of people helping each other. And uh, oftentimes in our history, we've elevated people uh, to great stature, sometimes heroic stature, for the work that they've done, putting themselves at risk to help other people. Uh, certain members of the military, the firefighters, police officers, have all been elevated to that status at one time or other because they're willing to serve others with sometimes the cost of their life. These two gentlemen today in front of me, Jackson Mack and Austin Work, they put their lives on the line in, in order to help somebody else. And that's what we're here today to honor their service to the community and toward them the Fire Department's Meritorious Service Award. In just a minute, I'm gonna let these two gentlemen tell you this, the story, let them tell you firsthand what happened. I wanna to talk to one of our fire captains and introduce Captain uh, Steve Shapira. He's gonna tell you what the fire conditions were like at the scene, and then we'll get into the formal award ceremony as well. So let me just set the tone a little bit. May 19th, uh, 2011, up in the north end of St. Paul, there was a, a, a elderly gentleman that was having a medical emergency, crashed his car in a garage, and the car started on fire with the man trapped inside. Austin and Jackson were nearby. They heard the explosion, or heard the crash, and came to help uh, um, the elderly gentleman, pulled him out of the car, and uh, saved his life. Certainly saved his life. So I'm gonna let these two gentlemen talk, and uh, thanks again for being here. Who wants to talk first? Basically, uh, I was upstairs and one of my friends that were, or my friend right here was sitting in this room sleeping. And all we heard, all I heard was a loud boom and then I heard a truck burn out. So I thought it was just someone that hit the garage and ran off. And then I went and looked out the window and all I seen was our neighbor, John, Jonathan, his car was sticking underneath the back of the garage. So I ran downstairs to go see what was going on because all I could hear was the motor running. So after I ran out and seen what happened, I ran back upstairs to go find a hammer. And then I ran back downstairs. Austin came running out and we ripped the door off. He was still in his car. The car or OnStar was being called or he was being called. Someone was being called from the car. And no one responded. So after no one responded, they called OnStar, I'm guessing, and then they asked him what was going on. But he didn't really he could, he didn't respond because he was blacked out. But uh, he after he I'm guessing heard that woke up and got out of his car and he's standing there still trying to get his car out the garage while we're trying to pull him out the back of the garage. And then finally we got him out of the garage, and that's when the fire department came. I mean, I guess I can tell. Uh, um, yeah, I was asleep, and I smelled like, you know, when a vacuum, the belt is burning, it smells like, oh, yeah, that's what I smelled. So I jumped up because I thought he was burning something in the house or something. So I'm like, okay, let me get up, go see what he's doing. So I got up, and I look out the window, and you just see smoke coming from the garage, like big piles. It was, it was white at first, so... I knew it wasn't bad at first, but you see a car sticking out of the garage, you, what are you gonna think? So I started running downstairs and he was running up to get the hammer and it was like, okay, well let's run out here. So we both ran out there and the door was like sideways onto the uh, garage. So we tore the door off of the garage and then yeah, we couldn't get to the uh, car right there. And then we heard OnStar calling and everything. And um, like he had said that he was like, there's a fire and I was like, what? And then I was like, okay, so I ran through the other side and looked in the garage where he drove through and I seen fire underneath the car. And John still wasn't answering us or nothing. So then we, uh, I ran back to the other side. We were trying to get in from there, but then flames just came. So we ran to the other side of the garage to where the, uh, 
the garage where he drove through and then John finally woke up and he must have stepped out of his car. And as soon as he stepped out of his car, we got in there and picked up the garage door and then we told him to come on. He was like, get my car, get my car. I want to save my car. And I'm just sitting there like, John, I'm sorry, but your car is not going to be okay. And then we pulled him out of there. We had to grab him by his hand because he was not trying to come. And yeah, then the fire department came after, yeah, kind of had to chase you down. But it was still okay. But yeah, that was about all that happened. Yeah. And I see Jackson's got an appropriate shirt on today. I, I like the flame pattern. That's a good thing to have. Awesome. While you gentlemen are pretty, being pretty modest about what happened, I'm going to introduce you to Fire Captain Steve Shapira. Three of our fire crews got there within a few minutes. A ladder 22, engine 18, and engine 17. Steve was the captain on engine 17. I'm going to have you describe, Steve, for us what the conditions were like in the garage. Uh, like the chief said, we all pulled up together at about the same time. Ladder 22 uh, started to force the overhead door. Engine 17 and Engine 18 both pulled their pre-connected lines. There was heavy smoke and fire showing from uh, the back of the garage. We uh, forced our way through the door, uh, both our lines at the same time crawling in, and because we believed the victim still be in there, we searched the car immediately. Um, our firefighter, Neil Forrest, didn't find a victim there. Uh, both companies put water on the fire, and we had the fire knocked down within un under a minute. And uh, from there on, it was pretty much checking for extension and making sure the victim wasn't there. But the fire was knocked down pretty quick, and uh, we immediately heard that the victim was pulled by two residents, and uh, we had a medic rig en route, and they hauled him down, I believe, to Regents. If you saw pictures of the car in the garage, it was pretty burned out when they got there. In fact, it uh, damaged the apartment building next door, too, because the, the buildings were so close together. So these two gentlemen did a, did a lion's share for us and uh, really serving side by side with the fire department. That's what makes us great in our city is citizens helping the departments and the departments helping citizens. So thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Austin, for your great work that day. Steve, can you give me a hand up here? They're addressed uh, uh, to Austin and Jackson. Uh, the subject is Meritorious Service Award, and it says the St. Paul Fire Department values bold action and bravery in the face of danger while in the service of other people. Those values are the mainstay of the American Fire Service and have been the hallmark of the St. Paul Fire Department for over 150 years. That is why we reserve the Meritorious Service Award for civilians who place their own life, who risk their own life in order to help another person in danger. The Meritorious Service Award is the highest award presented by the department for heroic civilian actions. On the morning of May 19, 2011, Austin and Jackson were asleep in their apartment when you were awakened by the sound of a loud crash. When you went outside to investigate, you found the garage on fire and your neighbor, Jonathan Lindeke, inside his burning car and unable to escape the rapidly growing flames. Unable to reach Mr. Lindeke from the back door to the garage, you both raced around to the front, forced your way through the broken overhead garage door, and made your way into the burning garage to find Mr. Lindeke and carry him to safety before firefighters could arrive. Your quick thinking and bold intrepid actions undoubtedly saved Mr. Lindeke from grave bodily harm. Without your swift and selfless actions, he would certainly have suffered severe and painful burns or he would have succumbed to smoke inhalation and died. By entering the burning garage to save Mr. Lindeke, you put yourself at risk of suffering the same excruciating burns or a similar death from the choking, poisonous smoke. The St. Paul Fire Department deeply honors all those who put themselves at great risk in order to help others imperiled by fire. And therefore, it is entirely appropriate and fitting that we, at the recommendation of Fire Investigator Andrea Minkinen, award you this meritorious service award for your valor and compassion towards your fellow citizen. You are a credit to all of us and we are grateful for your extraordinary efforts. Jackson, congratulations and thank you. And then we've got some I guess I'll just hand these to you, right? 
This is the uh, department's meritorious service award for uh, going above and beyond really the call of what a civilian would do to help another person and imperiling your life in the same in the same manner. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.